This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Five out of the door! With your host, Mark Martinez. Because I'm the Mark and I'm awesome! The Guru. Today I'm going to break it down for all you simpleton sweat hogs listening out there in Can Crusher Nation. I don't mean to come out here week after week and toot my own horn, but toot, toot. And the English Professor. It is I, the English Professor from the County of Kings, speaking the English of the Queen. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And welcome back to another edition of Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez, joining me in studio with all the equipment set up for the first time in forever, the glorious guru... And of course the dogs are eating because mom's not home today. So guess who joins us, Chad? The needy twins. The needy twins. Of clearly I thought I'll give them a treat and they'll calm down. Miggy decides I'm gonna eat it right next to me. Well, and then Max just goes in on the couch and he's chowing on his. He'll be busy for a while. Uh Miggy's almost done. And it's one of those huge ass rawhide things. So yeah, um, we got some news. If you didn't listen to Friday's show, we got some news, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Chad, how was your week? It was a week. Uh, no no work this week due to the rain. Kind of just pissed around, pretty much. Didn't do much of anything. Video games, at least? Eh, a little bit of video games, but, I mean, kicking the shit out of the Steelers and the Raiders gets old after a bit, and... See, I'm not on football. Baseball, right. baseball pisses me off. It, it pisses me off, so I just start drilling people. Uh, I know you have the switch, and I'll tell you this because this is legit. I didn't tell you at all. Normally, I tell you every time I get a video game. Um, hunting Simulator for the Nintendo Switch, three ninety nine, right now. Hmm. I played for legit maybe five minutes because then I started doing all of this yesterday, and then. We did other things, and then I took a nap yesterday, and then there was a lot of wrestling to touch on, and there was a lot of wrestling to touch on, and then we'll get there. This was a good week for wrestling, I think. This was a good week, kickback week. Um, I mean, we'll talk about uh, everybody having fans back. Uh, I, I said it from day one, It's without the fans, it's just not the show it doesn't matter who you have doesn't matter what storyline is a surprise anything like that without the fans there it's not as enjoyable you're right because i went back everybody knows i don't watch anything live anymore because i'm smart um or busy i don't want to say smart but just busy uh i watched the fan wrestling first and then I went back and watched Raw oh Oh. (laughs) that was the dreadfulest 15 minutes of fast forwarding that I've ever watched in my life and it's just it's the excitement it's like going to the ballpark and you know you want to have other fans there too and you you wouldn't want to just be the only fan there watching a baseball game with the wrestling, you other people, how they're reacting. High fives. It takes, if you want to talk about how, how fans direct a match, I just rewatched yesterday the Hulk Hogan Rock first match, and the fans literally turned the decision in that match. That's what the fans can do on that level. Imagine what they're doing for the TV level, for being back, you know, after roughly a year and a half-ish. But I enjoyed it. This week was a decent week of wrestling. Um, yeah, 
you were also someplace Sunday. You forgot the. Uh, I mean, we'll get on the. We'll get to the card because I watched it mostly Sunday. The rest on Monday. Yeah, uh, little guy and I went to uh, Ring of Honor's uh, Best in the World uh, last Sunday in Baltimore um, at the UMBC Arena. Uh, nice arena to have a card in. It looked nice. Um, very clean. It's. Uh, I want to say intimate. You could have the fucking nosebleed seats in there, and it would be absolutely perfect. Um, it's one place we definitely should keep in mind when wrestling comes back to to go to. Uh, Duly noted. Um, when I bought the tickets, and when the tickets were pretty much on sale, they had the um, the Corona whatever protocols protocols in place so it wasn't as filled as it could have been um they only had about half of an arena and then they had about half of that filled but again this wasn't on them this they couldn't start oh protocols are lifted and now we're just going to sell you know the other fifty thousand tickets yeah Um, well Maryland is one of the stronger ones like Pennsylvania. Like, that was their first show in Maryland over overall. Because when we talk to James Ellsworth, he's got his own and other people, MCW and everything. They're finally opening up in August for, like, indie shows, I guess yeah. I want to say. So that was Maryland's first thing. And they still, you still had kind of pod seating because I saw you and Vinny a couple times. Yeah, um, they when they sold the tickets originally, that's what they were. That's how they were selling. You yeah. bought two tickets. You said like, okay, uh, two ringside tickets. Okay, if you were lucky enough to get them, you got two ringside, and then they had you know six feet protocol. Blah 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 blah. And it, it limited the seating. I was kind of wondering when I got there and seen, I was like, this is going to be interesting how they film this and how they make this look. Um, I still haven't done the review of it yet or, you know, watched it back again. But uh, we were, they have the ringside. They have like six, seven feet out from the ring. Then there's their barriers uh, at about 10 feet in between then, the barrier and the ringside. Then there was another, there was like two rows of ringside seating on the side that we were on. We were on the, not the strong camera side. When you see a lot of the shooting, they're shooting opposite the entrance um, where they had most of the seating. But we, there was legitimately two rows and then it started the elevated seating. We were in the second row of the elevated seating. Literally, my seven-year-old could have thrown a football to the middle of the ring. Yeah. Um, when the guys came out to the corner, Bandito, uh, Roosh, the Briscoes and stuff like that came out into the fans. They came out into our area. Uh, fucking excellent card from top to bottom. For sure. Well, we're going to touch on that real quick because I have some thoughts as well about what's going on, but if you noticed um, the announcement as we're a few minutes in now, if you listen to Friday's show, you heard that the English professor was on that show, and you know, both of you pop up on the spotlights every once in a while, depending on who gets the interview or uh, who has more knowledge of the interview person, essentially, because I don't have any, I just like talking to them. Um, the English professor is going to take a, a little bit of a sabbatical. Most people take, you know, spring breaks or, you know, he's taking a late summer break for a while. Um, just to reset. Uh, I, I think if you didn't listen, he said it better. He's just not into wrestling right now. And I think it's worn on all of us, Chad. This week has done something to me. I'm energized again. Uh, hopefully John goes back and watches some stuff. Um... Essentially, the IWC show from last night, too, was effing crazy, and we'll talk about that. But it, it's worn on him. It, it's not a, it wasn't a good product. He is busy. His kids are doing more running. He's got two, so he's this way, that way. And he still doesn't understand technology to record anything. 
So the English professor is going to take a little bit of time off, regroup. Um, he'll be back, though. If we have to start him back with a stupid segment, I don't mean stupid, like with just a stupid segment of him doing his English professor thing again to get his juices flowing, that's all right. He'll be back. But, and we all need this every once in a while. Yeah, this, I was, I would say I was a little bit surprised about it, but honestly, it's, I'm jealous a little bit. It's, it's not on him on this and don't know how else to put it. This is a sad statement of what wrestling has become. Let's not blame it on the pandemic. Um, but this is a sad statement of what wrestling's become over the last couple of years. A lot, lot of sizzle, no. Yeah. You know, hey, you want to see what wrestling's become over the last couple of years? Look at the exploding ring match in AEW. Yeah. I get more fucking sparks out of a thing of sparklers from Sheets than I did than they did that match. Um, or the end of that match. Uh, so I, I can understand it, you know. His kids are into baseball. His uh, son yep. is into baseball and that. Um, the daughter's got band and play is going on and everything. I mean, like, they're opening up and doing everything again. So those kids are never at home. It's kind of, it's kind of a... I don't want to say a priority, but it's, it's kind of a thing. What are you getting more enjoyment out of? Right. And always get more enjoyment out of spending time with your family. We all do. Um, uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, Kelly will love the in the intro of that. I don't know. I hate my family. <laughs> but you're, if wrestling was real exciting, if they weren't bringing, and we'll get into this, fucking relics from 40 years ago into main event stuff and everything. Instantly. You just don't, oh, I'll watch that later, or... If there's something interesting on it, and this is what I do a lot of times, if there's something interesting on the reviews, oh, holy shit, this guy. I, in fact, I did it for uh, Impact Slammiversary. There's no way in hell. And I'm to each is his own, but Impact's kind of like the lower uh, level, the bottom feeder right now. I wanted to see what would happen what, if they were going to pull anything, and they pulled some good shit. They did. But it's not, it wouldn't have been enough for me to pay $40 for their pay-per-view. Right. No, I understand. Um, we're, there's so much wrestling this week, and we're in the, uh, we, Big Brother's a huge show in our family, where they're locked in the house. If you don't know what Big Brother is, she's Jesse's Goddard's was on it, you know. It's kind of like the CBS version of what The Miz was on. Um, everybody knows what Big Brother is. But that's one of the shows that, the family watches. Of course, we don't watch it live, so we have to find another day to watch it when it is on. Um, I didn't get to watch NXT. You, when you came to do the recording this morning, I woke up at 6 o'clock this morning, and I went, did checked our community pool, came back, laid back down, started watching NXT, and I passed back out. Uh, I watched, hey, welcome to NXT! And I just, I, I need, and I and I do that once in a while, too. I just need to. So, NXT, if you know anything about it when we cover it, you can cover it. Um, I don't know what the hell happened. I do know that Karrion Cross, just because of social media, uh, choked out Joe. That's about all I see. I I did not. It's one show that I didn't watch any of it so, this week. There we go. We'll catch up on NXT next week. Because I'm not going to go back. I'm, I'm not. It's recorded, but... We're doing the show right now. I'm not going to go back and uh, watch it and say, oh, man, that was really good. Nope, that's just the way it works. So, update. Um, the adjuster came, looked at the car, making a decision tomorrow, which is Monday. She got a sweet 2021 Nissan Versa? Is that Versa. what she said? I, I don't know cars. We know this by four years of the podcast now. It's a nice car. And of course, that's what Kill she wants now. She just give me this car and you can take that. Well, we're, we're clearly not going to get that. Plus, it's from Enterprise. Um, so she's tooling around in that right now. Nice car. And you know why we're going early again, Chad? Because just looking at my schedule last night after I talked to you, I have therapy today. 
On a Sunday, you're looking at me. You're like, yeah. On a Sunday? Yeah. I have ink therapy. We're not talking like 12 no. inch therapy. No, no, no. Oh. I usually don't drink on Sundays, you know that, unless there's a big family thing. Uh, That's enough of a reason to drink. <laughs> right. I have ink therapy today. Uh, continue, oh. continue in the sleeve of stickers and wrestling baseball logos. Um, I don't know what two she's going to throw on me today, but I'm excited. I remembered that last night. I'm like, yeah. Damn. So, more ink heading to Hamburg. And let's talk about wrestling. And we'll leave Hamburg at the end when we do the uh, Money Bank predictions. I'm actually excited about Money in the Bank, too, Chad. Yeah. I'm, fans back. Um, Max is we'll, bugging we'll, the shit out of you. We will uh, kind of hit uh, the Ring of Honor show last week. Yeah, let's. we'll just start. We might as well just go Sunday through last night. We'll do a couple. We'll take a break. And then we'll... Uh, We'll go from there. Well, how about we go up to NXT right now? Okay. Um, Ring of Honor show, like I said, uh, they started an hour early. They let people in on time. Holy fuck, there's a new concept. Um, they had a couple of uh, pre-matches. The one was uh, Danhausen and uh, PCO against the uh, Beer City Bruisers. Uh, holy fuck, that one... Beer City Bruiser looks like fucking Yokozuna. He fucking ballooned huge. up. Last year when he was on, because ROH was done by the time he made it to NWA. And no disrespect, it looked like he put an extra 100 pounds on since the yeah. last time he was on NWA. Yeah, he's fucking huge. Uh, I, I felt sorry for Dan House and Jesus, that poor little bastard. He can't be more than about 160 pounds soaking wet and... He gets in there with those guys. It was bad, but it was it was entertaining. Um, and comes where he takes his bottle of teeth and dumps it in the guy's mouth, and um, it was it was good. He's crowd was really behind him. Uh, he's got a good gimmick going. He does, and I'll tell you that was on the pre-show, like you said. And essentially, that's what made me. And I know you have the ROH thing, and we talked about it. I'll just get the code from you and watch it. But I'm like, well, uh, essentially the Danhausen match made me hit buy for 20 bucks, And I'm like, okay. And I thought, well, it's already 8 o'clock. Hit the record button, because it's Sunday night. This was the whole just why I didn't go with you. Um, hit the record button, and let's see how long I stay awake. I slept on the couch that night, by the way. Watching it because he wasn't not because he was in trouble, but because he was watching. Yeah, wrestling. Wrestling. I was in trouble for other things, well, but I, I mean, I still make my way to bed. If at you're least. breathing, you're in trouble with Kelly <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> this is true. Um, so that's what made me buy it. It really did. I like Danhausen and PCL. I love that team for for the stupidness of it. It's funny. I, I just enjoy them, and you know, we say, "Oh, if this shit was in WWE, we'd rip it apart." No, because that's all WWE 90% does. When it's 10% of this, it's funny. When it's 90% of it, it's fucking stupid. Yeah. It, I don't want to see that all the time. You didn't see... I don't even want to go to the back to the 80s, what I consider the greatest decade of wrestling. Go back to the 50s and 60s. You'd have a little bit of stupid in there. Gorgeous George, um, other characters like that. Haystacks, Calhoun, uh, what was those big fucking twins that were like 500 pounds oh, apiece? Oh, I know, yeah. I can't think of... You'd have things like that, but it wasn't 90% of your fucking show. Right. That's what WWE's problem is. So, but back on uh, Ring of Honor, uh, I can't remember the match. I got him in order. Then you have the Briscoes against Black and Thompson, and th this was just a beatdown. Yeah. Nothing but a beatdown. And I'm shocked. Like, the Briscoes are such a big name, big to do, even though it's the opening match or something. I always expect the Briscoes to be on later in the show to get that the crowd back up, because they could have had anybody else be the opening match and be excited. 
there might be another match that I'm like, eh, but they started they hot. started off hot. That was their whole thing. And that place fucking erupted when they come out. I mean, my little guy puts his hands over his ears and he's laughing and jumping up and down, but he put his hands over his ears and then had me put my hands over his ears. That's the first time you guys made the camera, by the way. You yeah. le- you legit were like this, and he's jumping, and your hands are going like... It looked like you were picking him up off the ground. And I really wasn't. I thought of that when I was you doing did. it. I was like, this looks bad. It looks like I'm giving the... You know, the... The, the neck stretcher. The, what's that move that Crush used to do? The uh, the crush. <laughs> the, I the head crush, or the Kona crush. Kona crush, there you go. Um, but it was fucking loud. Uh... You know, P.J. Black and, uh, what was the other guy's name? Thompson. Thompson. They talked some shit. They got their shots in, but this was a Briscoe demolition. Yeah. Um, of course, Briscoe's won. Next match was Flip, uh, Flip Gordon against EC3, and this this match is what got you going. I know this match is what got you going. I was... I was Irritated that it was on so early, but I was like, "Okay, I'm just I'm gonna go with it." And um, it, this was a good match. It was a good physical match. Uh, EC three one, which kind of surprised me, considering that the next big uh, pay per view the announcement is was Flip Gordon against whoever the champion is for the title. Um, so it kind of surprised me they had EC three one. But after the match, at the end, EC3 offers his hand once, flip slaps him, I'm fucking screaming. Do it again, do it again. They did it again. Offers his hand again, slaps him. Third time, and flip just from the bottom of his toes, sucks up the nastiest fucking loogie and hits him right in the forehead. Normally, I'm not... I think that's fucking disgusting, and I'd kill somebody. But I like Flip Gordon so much, I was like, oh, you dirty little... Peckerhead? Yeah. That's one word. He... You saw that. and it, Normally you do see spit coming, but this looked like a quarter size, maybe even half dollar size, loogie. Just, because they were about three feet away. You just saw it. it when you go back and watch it, you just see it coming. <laughs> what is EC3 thinking at that time? Like, oh, holy shit, where is this going to hit me in the foot? Reactions, you you should move. He took it like a champ. Yeah, that was, holy shit. And EC3 looks like, oh my god, what a fucking badass. Yeah. In, I don't know how well it showed on film, but... Um, what a fucking badass. Yeah. I, I, and I look back and think of when they dicked him around in TNA and everything like that and made him out to be a pussbag. He looks TNA, like a... TNA, I would, I would disregard that TNA at least he had a title run. He looked good there. You know who dicked him over? Well, WWE. That goes with... Yeah. Well, we don't know what to do with him. You got a big guy, talented that can wrestle and is decent on the mic, yet, and you don't know what to do with them, yet you keep. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, next matchup was a six-man match. Um, Shane Taylor's group against Dalton Castle's group. I didn't even write down the rest of his guys. I... This was just, a th- those guys were just thrown together, uh, tease them fighting. Uh, Shane Taylor, Jesus. Good Lord, that, that man, for as, as big as he is, uh, super heavyweight with moves along lines of uh, Bigelow and Vader. Without a doubt. Without uh, a doubt. And, of course, they won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had you know they had to. Uh, Silas Young against Josh Woods, last man standing. I didn't see this outcome. I really didn't. I was kind of wondering about it, but they're, Silas Young has kind of been going to where he's more of a veteran that's pushing the younger guys and helping the younger guys. Um, 
I was kind of st still surprised that they had, I figured, maybe a, a double fucking count out, especially when they went through the two tables the way they did. Yes. And I want to say something about those. Every fucking table that they pulled out, because there was quite a few tables There was about used, 17 in this match. Um, through the whole night, even. We were so close when they pulled these tables out and turned them over. You know, a lot of times on WWE, you'll see... It may not be cracked all the way, but you'll see a crack. People, these fucking tables were not jimmied in any way. And when they went through them, especially this one, uh, that was... Yeah, the end match I mean, one. everything just fucking went up in the air. Shit blew up in the air from them. Yeah, I want to talk about a table when we talk about IWC last night. Uh, you saw it if you checked out Facebook this morning. So, Josh gets the win. Next matchup, I thought it was going to be back and forth a little bit more. Jay Lethal against Brody King. Not so much. Dominant uh, victory by Brody King. Uh, this one really caught me by surprise. Um, I kind of thought maybe they were going to be pushing Lethal a little bit more since they took him out of the not having the titles and stuff like that. Um but this was surprising, but Brody King is finally getting a push. Yeah, good. I, I've always liked him. Next matchup is a pure match. Mike Bennett against Gresham for the pure title. And remember, people, Mike Bennett, as in used to be in WWE. Mike Canales, or, yeah. Maria Canales's sperm donor, whatever the fuck they called him every week. Um, way underrated. He is. This was a, this was a good match. Um, sometimes I get lost in pure matches because it's just a fight. It, not not a fight because you can't use fists and everything. Sometimes, and it's not on Gresham's part because he is technically one of the greatest wrestlers out there. It's just some of the people that he has to wrestle to keep this pure thing going aren't up to his par. And I was wondering how Bennett was going to do in this. He did well. This was a good yeah. match. Yeah, he followed. He was able to follow him really well. It didn't really look out of place. Gresham's just a beast. I so help me every time the guy's like on his hands and hands and knees, and he kicks that arm out. Oh my god! All I, I'm just waiting one of these days to see the guy's fucking arm go flying like Sid Vicious's leg when he fucking oh. broke it. Oh. Next match. Was a match of the night for me, though. Match, uh, I'm going to ruin it already. A match of the night was um, Deppin and Dragon Lee for the TV title. This was unbelievable. If you have not watched it, spend the 20 bucks, sign up for the ROH club, whatever. This makes it into the match of the year candidate for me. Yeah, it was it was great. I uh, had seen these guys before. Um Deppin, we seen at last year's uh, December pay per view that we got. Um, really thought, holy shit, this guy's really good. But going right back to what we said about the fans, the fans were sitting and watching and cheering this match. There wasn't no, this sucks, boring, everything like this fucking match was good. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, unbelievable. Dragon becomes the fifth person to win the TV title twice. Um, then you have the tag team title match. This is where I'm going to... What? I was fucking lost when this one was going on. I'll tell you, this wasn't advertised. No. I had no fucking clue what was going on. Well, uh, apparently Titus's partner, and this happened on the pre-show before I started watching, uh, wasn't cleared to wrestle or whatever... And this is what I have to say about this, Chad, because every time somebody needs a mystery partner in ROH, it seems Gresham wrestles twice every night. And no disrespect, he, he just did his pure thing, and then he's going to come over and do more of a harder style or anything. I, I think there's a clash there for me. I'm like, all right, you just showcased him for 25, 30 minutes in this awesome pure match. He's beat the hell. A uh, little segment was recorded prior, which pissed me off because it really wasn't live backstage because he still had the tape around his wrist when he ripped it off in the match. Um, 
why is it always Gresham? That's- well, with this one, I was thinking, I was thinking the same thing, honestly, where it's like, fucking really? But Gresham is in the group. Yeah, I... So that's why this one kind of went off the way it did. I think them bringing in some more people, you're not going to see them go back on him. But Lethal couldn't do it. Yeah, he just got was destroyed. One, lethal was one that was hurt. Um, and for them to be able to defend the titles, it had to be their group. So I see why they did it. But to me, the writing was on the wall. They were losing this match. Yeah. When they pulled this. Because Gresham legitimately, fucking dude, he he didn't want to get off of his feet. He didn't. He looked beat down. And it's not because he can't take it. Mike Bennett was a little bit little bit bigger of a guy than him. Probably has him by 30, 40 pounds. And regardless of how good you are, that shit's going to wear you down. Yeah. And they had a hell of a match. Uh, we get the announcement. Yeah, Dickinson and Homicide, new tag team champions in ROH. We get the... <laughs> I'm sorry. We got to go to Homicide. Dude has... Um, who's a Gresham's partner? Uh, Titus. Titus is being held down. Homicide pulls a fork out, and you can hear this. The mic picks this shit up. I'm gonna cut this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, we got Abdul the Butcher Jr. here. Yeah. And he didn't make it to it, but it was just funny shit. Homicide, been around for... Probably what fucking twenty years, almost yeah. twenty years. All of has not lost a thing. No, no. We get the announcement of the, Maria Canales comes out, tells us the women's bracket and everything, and then surprise, Chelsea motherfucking Green shows up on ROH. A hey, Maria looks as good as always. She's thick, but she oh my god, she's gorgeous. Um. Chelsea Green comes out. I lost it about shit. I was, I mean, people went nuts. You could see the emotion in her eyes. She was trying not to break down a bit. That whole fucking place was chanting for her. Yeah. Um, you listen to her podcast. She uh, she got out of her deal with the week. They they worked out something because she wasn't supposed to be able to wrestle until last night. We'll talk about that. But she got out a week early from her 90-day thing, and knowing that she wasn't going to be able to wrestle because she just got her cast on for everything, um, she, was ex- she was excited. ROH was number one to go to because she's never been at. Yeah, she. you could just see it in her eyes. She was glad to be back, glad to be with the fans. She explained the whole thing of her the contract and... Basically, she had the cast on. She wasn't going to be able to wrestle anyway, so, okay, they let her out of the contract. She made the, you know, she made the appearance. She said what she's going to do, and they have a women's tournament coming up. Keep an eye on it. Yep. She's going to be there for the term tournament commentating, but she was like, keep an eye on this tournament. You're going to be surprised at some of the people you can see. You, you might say it's iconic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it's beautiful as well because yeah. beautiful people are in it. Um, and then we get the main event the heavyweight championship match. And Miggy's up because he, he watched this with me Monday, then afternoon, because he was excited for Roosh against Bandito. And. Chad, we talked, we know some things, but I still don't know if I saw it until I saw it, essentially. You know, with Bandito becoming the ROH champion. I didn't see it coming. Uh, Roosh is a badass. Um, He was such a bastard in this match. Yeah. You know, I thought this match, the way it started off and the way it went for probably the first ten minutes, I was like... They're not going to have them win. They're going to have them make a comeback. It's going to look good. Roosh will cheat. You know, some shit like that. Um, but Bandito showed 
to me, he showed he could handle it. Um, funny that Roosh was one that was a champion, had his championship reigns during the pandemic. Had never wrestled in front of a crowd, always wanted, or had never wrestled as champion in front of a crowd, wanted to wrestle. He lost his title. Who else did that? Never wrestled in front of a crowd with a title. Drew McIntyre. And then lost it. First time? No, the uh, women's champion um, that Brett beat. Oh, uh, Hikaru Shita. Yeah, she'd never wrestled in front of the crowd. Yeah. And I just thought it was kind of like, hmm. Oh. Yeah, ironic. Uh, this match, fucking great match. It, you want a technical, it had technical. You want a brawling, it had brawling. But this had... The end of this match made so much fucking sense. Trying to get the mask... Roosh is trying to get the mask off. And the mask rips. While he pushes the referee away, he goes, fucking tell the fat bastard referee, stay out of my face. Turns around... And instead of the the usual small package, Bandito hits him, grab legs underneath his arms, flips him over, and pins him. There was a for the first two to three seconds, there was like a hushed fucking silence on the crowd, and then everybody went nuts. Even my little boy was like. Dad, I didn't see him beating that guy. Uh, what a what a match. Um, then afterwards, uh, Dragon, they all beat up on uh, Bandito, and Dragon stayed in the ring. He wouldn't participate in it. They have come up through the ranks together. Right. And have wrestled each other, you know, kind of split up. One bad guy, one good guy. But he stayed in the ring, and it, I hate to bring it up because of what happened years after, but it reminded me of the pure emotion of Eddie Gilbert and Chris Benoit when Benoit won the title, and you could see it in those guys. You could see them crying. You could see their bodies. These guys were doing that. They were... Right. The emotion They were still friends at heart. Yeah. And... I, I don't see when the worst match on this car, and if you if you had to pick, oh you have to because it just it happened. Yeah, the worst match on this card to me was the tag team title match. Yeah, and it's not that it was bad, but you know you're rating them one to five stars. The tag team title match was still a four star match. Yeah, everything else was just a step above. It was. it was a great card, great comeback for ROH. They set the bar. For the I week. Will, I will, they set the bar for returning pay-per-views. Uh, what, what is everybody going to... What is everybody going to do? Are you going to stick with the same old tired fucking formula? <clears throat> WWE? Um, you have to do something. You they. It doesn't matter that there was... You know, a a 50th of the fans at that show that there's going to be at Money in the Bank tonight or SummerSlam next month. You, they set the bar. They did. They they did. All right. So after watching that, you move to Monday for Raw. What happened on Raw, Chad? Right. That's where I would put the uh, cricket in if we. Okay, were I was trying to think. Did I fucking miss something? No, you, you didn't. You didn't miss anything. Um, MVP lost to, to Woods, and he kind of got pissed off. Uh, Why do you have your world champion, your dominant world champion, who is, for better purposes, kick the shit out of Drew McIntyre? Fucking lose to Cassius Creed or whatever the fuck his name was before. Yeah, what was it? Consequences Creed. Creed. Yeah. Why? No. 
oh, it's an upset and they happen all the time. Not the week before your fucking pay-per-view, it doesn't. Yeah, I don't... Jinder and Drew get into it, set up a match. Uh, Drew destroys the motorcycle, which I, that was the tonka motorcycle I've seen in a while. He struggled getting the, the tailpipe off, though, if you saw that. Uh, fatal four-way match for the women was... It, Raw was god-awful. After I said, I, I watched everything but NXT... And I shouldn't have. I should have watched Raw first. So I was still in the Thunderdome era. I, I don't... That I'm as, done much with. As, as much as I liked the Thunderdome at first, it got old. Yeah. It got old quick, and I'm glad it's done. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and why not, now talking about this, they've been in Florida still... Why not have half a crowd at least or something? You you had 50,000 people, 75,000 million people at WrestleMania. Why couldn't you open your doors at the, the Thunderdome and have 10,000 people there spread out? Florida's been open. I think it was because at the time that it was booked and just like Ring Dude, of WrestleMania Honor, happened. Had... WrestleMania happened four months ago now. They just didn't want to rip the Jumbotrons down. Yeah. I mean, get one last use out of it. Yeah. Well, it's Maybe. Fl- and I'll tell you what. Honestly, this week, what could have been the factor on that, they could have probably very easily gotten some people in there and everything. But who wants the bigger... Who who has the bigger contract? I mean, who I mean, needs the bigger ratings? Right. And I know Fox. And it's Fox. Okay, We'll, we'll go one more week with Raw. We'll give Fox the bigger ratings with the crowd going into the pay-per-view. Keep fucking around, WWE, and USA is going to can your ass. Yeah. Uh, then we'll move to Tuesday, and we'll touch on Tuesday real quick. Uh, neither one of us watch NXT. Um, that, that's it. Uh, you saw some of the spoilers. The big thing was Joe and Karrion Cross got into it, and then... And I didn't see that live, taped, retaped, or anything. No. So I, I, we can't really touch on NXT. So, all right, this is a good, ta- this is a good place to take a break for us, um, and tell you that it's Al Snow's birthday. How old is he? Four hundred and sixteen. Four hundred and sixteen. He's it's legit his birthday. So happy birthday, Mr. Al Snow. Um, we love you. We'll see you soon. I'm sure. 416. He looks good for 416. Yeah, I mean, plastic surgery can do a lot. Well, that's what, he, that's what he has Chad Miller for. He knows the doctors. Oh, okay. Yeah. But he also owns a company. It's called Collar and Elbow, Chad. But I, I, oh. I, I, like the, I like that Chad Miller's hooking Al Snow up because with all the plastic surgery and everything, he's not looking like Charlotte Flair did. <laughs> when John listens... Don't forget, we'll still get critiqued by him. I'll, I'll get a message each week saying, you guys are assholes, why are you still picking on me about Charlotte? Give me a break. Ba, 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 ba. Well, whatever, John. I mean, That's you. I've seen better wood carvings with Top chainsaw town. than when Charlotte got done with her enhancements. <laughs> Collar and elbow, hats, hoodies, tees, sweats, pants, stickers, eye patches, masks if you need them anymore or you want to wear them. Hopefully by winter, snowshoes. Oh, yeah, snowshoes. We need to get those, guys. Happy birthday, Al. Uh, Chad, we have a promo code. What is it? Can Crushers. And how much you say? You're word, doing all this now, by the way. All one word, capital C and can, capital C and Crushers, and you save 10%, which, at best, is what John tips when he goes out to eat at a restaurant. If you're lucky, normally you get stuck with the bill. Here comes Al Snow to tell you about Collar and Elbow. We come back, we'll dive into shows with fans and a hell of a lot of surprises. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. 
passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is B. Brian Blair asking you to turn it into the Can Crushers podcast or you're going to get stung. And welcome back to another edition of Can Crushers. No, the same edition of Can Crushers. We won't different edit that part. out. It's a different segment in Can Crushers. Um, new technology, new things to do. So I'm just watching the screen, make sure everything. Hey, you just heard from B. Brian Blair bringing it back. Um, shout out to him, you know, the, the collar and elbow, the Cauliflower Alley Club president. Just had some surgery done. This is like his 18th or something surgery I read. But he's on the mend. He's doing well. Um, hope for a speedy recovery. And for myself, I hope you're well and able to come out by October when we're done at Slebfest 2. Because, Chad, we, we talk about where we're going. And we're going to talk about the Hamburg one that we're going to this coming weekend. But... Yeah, Sammy's going to be there, Darby's going to be there, Chelsea's going to be there. A lot of huge stars. Celebfest 2, I'm going because the Killer Bees are there. I'm throwing that on the table. And, <coughs> no no joke on this, people. This is, you know, they could have every anybody and their mother there. He he zoomed in on the Killer Bees. I really did. You I, know, here I am. Oh, Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, holy shit. Yeah, you know, take my money, motherfuckers. And he's like, Killer bees, and I'm like, I've always loved them. Um, my mom had kind of a, a crush on B. Brian Blair. You know, she apparently she liked the longer, straggly hair. I'm not saying he had straggly hair, but like the curly hair. She loved Magnum. Brian Blair, when he was huge in the WWF with the Killer Bees, he had that, you know, curlier hair in the back. I, I don't know if this is still like a mom thing. I, I like them, though. I love that they were good guys that used that mask, you know, to their advantage. There's just something about the Killer Bees as a younger kid that I, I love them. You know, they, they weren't up as high as the Rock and Roll Express or the Midnight Express, but they, they were in the top they five came, for me. They came a little bit after that. Right. And it just, it wasn't the same. You know, that's that's catching lightning in a bottle there. Um Jim Brunzel, uh, no slouch himself. I remember him back in the AWA teaming with Greg Gagne. The High Flyers. And going for the tag titles, going against uh, Buddy Rose and Doug Summer. Um, I can't remember who, who Boris Zukov was champions with. Uh, I remember him back in those days. Uh I can't remember where I was going to go with that. I was thinking of I don't either. Greg and Greg and Vern Gagne and how uh, how Vern talked about how good Brunzel was, and Gagne's like he's better than I am. I'm I'm on his coattails. Yeah, and that's that's a lot for somebody like Vern to say. Uh, God rest his soul. And Greg, you could believe him then. Now. You don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's the only person I've seen that's out there more than Greg Gagne is Virgil. <laughs> and Virgil's out there. Uh, I just watched another reason, because there's so much wrestling on in the week, but there's still things that I just need to watch. And I, I know I watched it years ago, but I forgot it. So I watched the AWA thing that's on the WWE Network, the spectacular that Vern kind of talks about and everything. I watched that again this week too. So not there's 35 hours of wrestling in a week, but I need to squeeze in something old still to watch. So and the, the, uh, can we say on the cock the <laughs> network? <laughs> that's how we, that's how we got to talk. Yeah. About now Peacock, no, it's on the cock. Um, I seen somebody posted in one of the wrestling groups that I belong to. They have Mid South, yep, world class. Um, they're finally pulling UWF, everything over. They're they are putting more shit on the network, on the cock, on the cock, um, than WWE did. Yeah, and this is where I think 
am I still happy about them editing stuff and no. everything? Eh. But if you're going to bring that shit back, I can get past you editing stuff because Mid South UWF, the world class um, AWA AWA, just hopefully not that god awful show that they used to have on ESPN. Glow? No. no, the AWA show. Oh yeah, it was. You know, four, it had as soon as we got home from school, we got our paper routes done, and four o'clock we had to watch. Uh, I, I I remember the bi- Billy Jack Haynes, big Jack son of a bitch. This is when he first come out of Portland. Um, Portland. Portland. Fucking huge dude. And I'm like, he's going to kick the shit out of that little kid that's in the ring with him. And this guy was a fucking toothpick. I could have kicked his ass. Who was it? Sean Michaels. Michaels. And he, Michaels slapped him. I thought Billy Jack legitimately fucking went Scott Steiner on him. Slapped him in that full Nelson. Done. It it looked worse than when uh, Bobby Lashley did it to Miz. Yeah. Uh, no disrespect to Bobby Lashley because you brought that up. He he doesn't have the best um, full Nelson. Uh, mine would have to go to Hercules first, and then Billy Jack Haynes. But th- um, it's one in one A. I Lashley's traps. Yeah, are too big for him to make it look as good. Uh, I. I gotta go with the best full Nelson. It's gotta go back to superstar Billy Graham. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he did break, uh, what was the Indian's name? Billy White Wolf's neck. Yeah. With a legitimately broke his fucking neck. neck, uh, with it. I gotta go with Graham, and number two's gotta be Ken Patera. Oh, I don't, how the hell did I forget about Patera? I'm an idiot. Patera was yeah. just a son. He was a son of a bitch. Yeah, all right. Thanks okay. for making me look horrible. All right. But that's easy to do. All right, so AEW. I watched that, and the crowd pulled me in from the welcome from JR. They were just so pumped. And they, these are the people that have had crowds the longest, but, of course, you know, maybe just headbutted the table. Um they have had crowds the longest, but your crowd on ringside was wrestlers. So no disrespect to any of our friends were down there, Spencer or, you know, Andrew Palace or the, the, the list of wrestlers that we've talked that were in there. Cool. You did your thing. The crowd was in the bleachers. So you really didn't see them, hear them, even understand or remember that they were there. Now you have Joe Schmo and Aunt Betty this- and everybody... The reactions are organic now. Yeah. Um, and I'll say the one thing, like when they had the wrestlers and stuff, and I know you like her, but I was so glad when they stopped using her at ringside was Big Swole. I, I don't like Big Swole. John's a fan of Big Swole. Oh. No, dis- I mean, she, I, I, she, she was horrible. Yeah. Because, because she was all up in their face, and, and that's fine. But at the same token... They know you're a wrestler. Right. We know you're a wrestler. It was it was too much. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I think they did the right thing. AEW did the right thing. First match on a night, which should have been later, I think, but it was smart to put it because you get the pop. Mox against Anderson for the IWGP title, U.S. Championship. Um, I knew it wasn't changing hands, and but... It was a hell of a brutal fight. And you throw Kingston in, and you throw Gallows in. They were there for a minute. They left. They got their heat. You're going to see a match between them soon, I'm sure. Holy shit, was this crazy. Here's our product, AEW fans. This is what you're going to go. There's no way that they could have come off of that high the rest of the show. Now, this was, again... Fans are back. Let's get this shit started. Well, I know nothing against anybody that fell after that, but it was let's start out hot, calm down, and then finish out hot with Darby Allen. Yeah. And that's exactly what they did. That is how it should be booked. This isn't a house show in Podunk, fucking Mississippi, where you have two matches that are worth anything. They're the last two matches on the card, and you have seven matches. Uh, Twiddling around. Yeah. 
bums and local guys that, you know, Scrappy McGowan or fucking Gordon Soley brought in from the hotel or something like that. Scrappy McGowan. Nice. Uh, again, Mox, he was he, famous for doing that in the Georgia was, thing. Of bringing, I just didn't think we were going to talk about him today. Bringing the, it was him and uh, there was another another referee that uh, did it. Cornette talks about they would literally just pick up guys at the hotel or something like that. Hey, you want to earn 50 bucks? Yeah, sure. You're going to get shit kicked out of you by these guys called the Road Wars. Oh, okay. And then you fucking see the Road Warriors coming down. This is stupid. I don't need the fifty dollars. I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> it, it's funny, um, John and yourself always bring up names because they're on the top of your mind and you remember them. Something I wouldn't remember Scrappy McGowan's name five minutes ago if you would have said something. But when it's in context, that's what makes me spark. I'm like, oh my god, I remember that name or something like that. You know, I, I that's yeah to say, hey, do you remember Thunderfoot? You guys are like, what? I remember the stupid stuff. So Archer challenges Mox to a Texas death match for next week for that IWGP title. All right, we're going to roll right into this. Mox says he accepts. Is this a way to get Archer back into things? Does Mox lose it? Because that's who Mox defeated for it. This one may be a telling point to the relationship that AEW has with New Japan. In that, I wouldn't see Mox dropping a New Japan title at a non-New Japan show. But as we'll talk about with Impact Wrestling, I didn't see the shit coming that they pulled last night. We'll get there. So I, I know I'm just. <laughs> We're saying, on Wednesday. I'm just. Hmm. It's a good point. I don't know. I. I would say this is the perfect person for Mox to drop it to. You got to. I'm not. I'm not debating that. I'm just. This is not a New Japan show. This isn't even a New Japan show in the states. Right. That's what I'm kind of like. This will be telling to what the relationship is. If they have them lose the title, there's more shit going on behind the scenes than we know of. If they don't, you still got that tepid feeling. Hey, yeah, you can do it. Have a hell of a match. Then we're going to bring you over here and, you you know, you're going to fight again Okada or somebody or, you know, maybe Archer again. And if y'all haven't seen their first two fucking matches over there for this title, they were brutal. Yeah. They, they, They were bad. I, I think, personally, it's time Mox drops this. Archer's the perfect person because he's got that great relationship over there. He's lost in the mix in AEW right now. He This week, he's standing up for um, your favorite Marco Stunt. Last week, he's beating up, <clears throat> I don't know, anybody bad. He's... In the big shows, there Paul White's there, but he's kind of that tweener right now. You don't know what Archer is. I think if he beats a bloody piss out of Mox and gets this and turns back into you know the killer that he is, the monster that he is, he gets back up to all right. He's somebody real. He's somebody that AEW when he comes back to maybe taking it over to Japan and losing it there to somebody. Holy shit, don't forget what he did to Moxley. This guy's a monster again. Watch out, Hager, Wardlow, Omega, anybody. Miro. Miro, yeah. They have... I don't believe in big guys being faces for long, if at all. He should be fucking destroying, just like Big Show should have been fucking destroying people his entire career. Yeah. Um... Do you do it to the extent of Andre the Giant? No. I don't think that would work these days. Um, But he's a big guy. He needs to be kicking the shit out of everybody, whether it's, you know, Marco Stunt or whoever. He just needs to be kicking the shit out of everybody. Then have him in 
a nasty match with another big guy. Um, you know, I think him and Miro would be a brutal battle because they're both stiff. Yeah. As fuck. I think that would be a good match. Andrade comes out. He pretty much challenges the death triangle is where we're set up with that. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing big there, but everybody was just excited to see him. Uh, Ricky Starks against Brian Cage. I don't want to say we saw this coming for the last two months, but we saw this coming for the last two months. Uh, Ricky Starks is your new FTW champion after pretty much everybody turned on Brian Cage. Yeah. That, again, like I said, it was, it was a, Okay card, but even this match, which the writing has been on the wall, was like, oh man, we got a new champion. And When are we ever going to say the FTW champion is anything? It, we're it's not. never been recognized by any anything. Yeah. So Any federation. Uh, Cody's pissed off about Alistair Malachi Black, uh, Tommy Andua. This is my big beef. You've called them three different things now. In two weeks that he's been there, please stick with the name. Because Cody's like Tommy and I'm Malachi Black. It's like he's, it's like they're almost mocking the name changes, but they're making themselves look bad. Yeah, by that, doing it. That's what I mean. It, and now, I said last week, why the fuck is why does Cody have to work with them? Everybody right off the bat. No, he doesn't need to. And now we see that Cody's out for a couple of weeks um, injury. Yeah. I don't mean to be rude. Thank God. This was his... This This match is going to happen, though. It's going to happen, but Malachi's going to get other matches in. Right. And that's what they should... He shouldn't be going straight with Cody. I'm sorry. I know Cody is what he is in that uh, organization, but you got to develop, let him get other victories. If Cody's not going for the world title, he he shouldn't be going against these guys right off the bat. That's just me. And with Cody's injury, and I don't mean to be I was as thankful to find out about his injury and that he's going to be off of TV as I was when Brandy announced her pregnancy and she was going to be off TV. She'll be back. Because he's getting to that point of where it's fucking irritating. And this is after that Ricky Starks match, by the way. We had the Cody thing. We had Telly, a little thing backstage. We have Hangman um, saying, yes, he's going to challenge Omega. And we're just going to skip through these rather fast. Then we have Jericho talking uh, to MJF about kicking his ass. And Sean Spears attacks him. So we have about 15, 20 minutes of just random promos and promotions, and that's the same word, by the way, just cut off, but just setting up. We finally get back in the ring with Matt Hardy against Christian. Um, even though this match happened a trillion times 20 years ago, again, the crowd made it. They, they really did, and I hope it's the end of this. I, I hope it's the end of Matt Hardy for a while. If anybody I'm sick of is Matt Hardy. Christian's continuing to get somewhat of a slight push to... You're going to see him with a title soon, I think. I, I, I think that's probably part of his contract, you know. I was just on Royal Rumble. Two weeks later, I'm going to be here. Get me in the title. And it's been six months now. So he needs... Uh, that's, I think, you're going to see him in Miro soon. Yeah, I think that be good or I is this going to be one that's going to be fed to Miro? Um, we still got some I guys. Hope so. We still got some guys out there that are in limbo and that their compete clauses are coming up quick. Yeah, at, today <laughs> they need to they need to feed they need to feed Miro more. They fucked him up totally. What they first did with him, they need to feed him more. Christian and Matt Hardy. I was a fan of these guys back in the day. Now I'm just like, yep, I'm there. There, this past week, there was an announcement at one of the events, and I'm not going to single them out, but there was an announcement at one of the events that we're going to 
that the man who started it all, first time back. Did I miss this one? I must have missed this. Matt Hardy. Oh, yeah. And it's like. Oh, yeah. Eh. Yeah. Eh. Eh. It's just like, I got more excitement out of finding out that Kimono Wanalei is going to be in Hamburg than I did fucking Me Matt too. Hardy. Me too. <laughs> Um, so the TNT title is going to be one that changes colors. It's like the Ultimate Warrior Intercontinental. Yeah, they've had five different versions of it already. I like Miro's. Yeah. That's all right. All right. Uh, Tony's in the ring with Britt. Um, get ready. This is where I, I'm taking the heat. I'm going to take the heat of this. Britt's on the same level as Stone Cold right now. Prove me wrong. She is a bastard. She spits on the fans. Not literally, but she spits on the fans. She shits on the fans. She hates the fans. They fucking love her. She can do no wrong. She is the hottest thing in AEW right now. The fans go complete apeshit for her. She doesn't care about them. All right. I'm not saying she's stone cold. No, no. But you know where uh, she's... On- she, yeah, she's... She's gotten, for some reason, over about a three-month period last year, it just, everything just clicked with her. Everything just, like, like lights came on. Not that she was doing anything wrong or anything like that, but, you know, sparks or whatever just hit with her. She's a bitch. She's you a bitch. every week. She's a bitch, and she's having fun with it. Her wrestling has come around to where she's better, very respectable. From when we saw her, at From, IW, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's we got pictures of how she started sweeping up after the ring. Yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna. There's very few things that'll really piss me off with wrestling, just because I know what it is. Um. But if Britt loses this title to Nyla Rose, I'm gonna be jacked. I'm fucking gonna be livid. Yeah. With this, this, I I don't know any title change or any character fuck over that pissed me off would piss me off as this much would. Nothing against Nyla Rose, but. You got the hot hand. You have a hot heel. Nobody likes Nyla Rose. Nobody fucking likes Vicky Guerrero. They're not pretending to be faces. No. The only way you take this title off of Brett is a face. And not for a while. And not for a while. Not for a while. Uh, Sammy destroys some guy named Wheeler. It's good to see Sammy back in the ring. Penelope against Yuka. Um, holy shit. Uh, Yuka wins. It was her. It was a showcase match for her, essentially. Penelope took some badass bumps in this match. I, I think Penelope, on paper, won this match because of what she did. <coughs> we, see, I, we always say this when we talk about Penelope. What she did in IWC, she was... Still a little bit green. Bliss 2.0, I remember being yelled at her. Yeah. Um, she's she's shining now, too. Uh, and and not to, when I say this about her, I don't, I don't mean to be rude, but her physique, when she was in IWC, she had, like, a 14-year-old girl's physique. She's blossomed, and I'm not being perverted when I'm saying this, <laughs> but she has gotten toned to her. She looks more like a physical women's wrestler, like a, a, a physical specimen versus a 14-year-old kid. Yeah. And everything stepped up with her. And then we get the main event of Darby against Ethan Page. Um, yes, Darby won the coffin match. Ethan Page, though, uh, I, I've been high on Ethan for a long time. He was in IWC as you tag team champion. Son after him. I did. Yeah, I named my son after Ethan Page. <laughs> Lies. Uh, we named him after the furniture store. No, I'm 
kidding. Constables. <laughs> yeah, which is closed now. <laughs> um, is Constables closed or is the other one closed? No, Constables is gone. Oh yeah, Constables. that's like a local furniture store to yeah. us people. That was, I I think they were there back in the caveman age. Probably the first made the first set of couches. Oh and for sure. They went out about a year and a half ago. Yeah. Roy B. Constables. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, uh, always been a fan of Ethan. I think this was the perfect match. This was the... Not, not meaning nothing was done wrong. This was the perfect match for Darby to do this coffin match with. Was Ethan Page. Yeah, it was... They they have uh, a history together. Um, so it was somebody that it was personal with comfortable and comfortable with. And I mean, it showed in the match. It was a great match. The coffin drop off the top. Darby's move, the coffin drop off the top rope through the coffin with page in it. Granted, if we're going to pick, we're going to pick the top of the coffin was made of, I don't know, eighth inch plywood. Like if you would have closed the door hard on that, it was probably coming. But you still took a coffin drop through a coffin on the outside. That was crazy. I can imagine what Ethan Page was thinking. Oh fuck! This is gonna when hurt. is this, this gonna is fucking gonna, hurt? Yeah, what's he doing? Coming. I hear the crowd. Wait, silent. Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. That hurt. Yeah. I, I, I would have like. Do you lay? Do you get in there and like turn that your back takes it? Or are you laying? You, oh, I know you guys can't no. see me, but are you just laying like with an X across your face? So like your you, these are not your shins, by the way. Your forearms or your like your how do you you'd take have to that? Be, you'd have to be laying on your back. I'm sorry, as a guy, there's no fucking way taking something like that. I'm laying on my stomach. Not gonna happen. Yeah, there's gonna be a shard of that wood just getting yeah, thrown into your You're gonna, be, in you're your gonna be neutered the fucking wrong way. Um, yeah, lay and just either you're covering your twig and giggle berries or you're covering your face. So let's talk about dinguses for a second. Chad's got a little bit of an injury, and he came down and he borrowed my ten. Not right. to my dingus. Well, that's what that was one of your questions, though, and that's why no, I'm bringing... wasn't. You said it. No, I did not. Yes, you did. You said I know you. I know I shouldn't have to say this, but don't put it on your. I said you're around your heart first off, and then you said, "Well, imagine sticking this on your dick," and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so Chad's got a little so, bit of an injury. Apparently, we're both. Uh, Dealing with shoulders right now. So he came down and borrowed my TENS unit. And he's like, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I'm like, all right, we're at like two and a half. He's like, oh, I start to feel it. I'm like, okay. I said, the most I've ever gotten on my TENS unit was at a four when I had it on your knee. He's like, oh, okay. So I get to, where was it? Maybe three. Two and three, four, sir. Just touching three. He's like, oh, I feel that. I'm like, okay. Um, And I'm not... Let me preface this. I'm not paying attention to the fucker. I'm talking to his wife. So I'm like, all right. I'm like, this is here. So I throw it up to a four. And (laughs) Chad got, what's the voltage in uh, electrical outlets? 180 or something like that? Yeah, it was like I took a fucking knife and shoved it in the light socket. Holy shit. And that's the four. Yeah. Did you make it to a four? Yet? I have made it to a four in my knee. I'm I gonna, told you. I'm going to do my arm when I go back, and I'll bring that to you back to you like Monday. I don't. Yeah, I don't, I'm all right. I have. Um, but, I, ha- I have ink therapy today. I'm telling you, this is going to sound that's stupid. What we should do for put on YouTube is us like shocking each other doing that shit. Uh, you go first. That's all right. Uh-huh. Just remember, revenge is a <laughs> fucking bitch. Um. This is going to make no sense, and we're going to have to cover SmackDown here in a second. But uh, literally, Chad, when I get my tattoos done today, my arm and shoulder will feel great this week. I, I've always said when I got my tattoos done, it wasn't painful. I am a bleeder by... That's what um, she said. Yeah. By, uh, naturally, I'm a bleeder, so when I got mine... I bled like a stuck pig, but to me it was irritating. It was like, you know, 
fucking laying and it's pitch black dark out and you're in a tent and there's one fucking mosquito that you can't get rid of. I just irritating. That's what the feeling was to me. See, I it doesn't bother me whatsoever. I I love sitting there and just you know, uh, me and my tattoo artist will just sit there and bullshit for two to three hours as she does these today about nothing and everything. Wrestling will be brought up. The family will be brought up. Like we've become like close friends now. So all right, on to SmackDown. Uh, and I don't know which ones. This is cool that. She never tells me what logo she's going to do. I sent her, like, 25 of them, you know, wrestling, baseball, oriented. And she's like, this is what you're getting today. And they're going to go here, here, and here. Oh, all right, cool. She's got a plan, she says. If not, I don't care. You, you tell me these stickers on my arm aren't fucking awesome. The Pit <laughs> Panther and The Undertaker so far. Um, yeah, I got a ton more. All right, so SmackDown. Uh, first WWE event with a crowd... Not as pumped as AEW. Because you start with Roman and the boys taking on uh, Ray, Dom, okay? But when Edge came out... Not John's brother, Dom. No, no. Dominic Mysterio. Yeah. Um, When Edge came out, though, holy hell. Because this is the first time Edge has returned. He was at the Royal Rumble... Which was nice. And then everything got shut down. He didn't get a WrestleMania moment this year, last year, or anything. This SmackDown was his huge return, finally. The problem that I have, and I've read about SmackDown, they are limiting crowd noise, turning, say, turning it down, yeah, not turning letting much. it come through as much. And then they're being ridiculous in certain points. Edge, yeah, great. But they've done it with um, other faces that they don't want to promote as high. They've toned it down. Roman Reigns, they've toned the shit down. I think that played into it not coming across as boisterous as AEW did. Because AEW is just like, fuck it, here's a mic. Yep. Open mic. This is what you're here, here you go. Listen, I not, with this new technology now, if I don't want Chad to be as loud, look at that. You, you can't hear you now. Boom. Yeah, right? <laughs> he's he's moving his mouth like I really did something. But, yeah. Oh, now he's a mime. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, again, other things on SmackDown... I was happy to see people there. Shotzi and Knox. Did you watch SmackDown? And, and, and I don't care if you did I or just, not. I'll be honest with you. And this, I, I don't care how bad this sounds. I know that my better half doesn't listen to this broadcast. Only reason I watched any of SmackDown was for Tegan Knox. <laughs> right. Um, her and Shotzi get another win. This is great for them. Essentially, they are on SmackDown now, so apparently throw the Is Knox... Is this a match tonight? I don't know. I, I, I mean, isn't, like, all but those four participants in the Money in the Bank women's match? No, because Nat and Tamina are... <laughs> I understand what you did. <laughs> um, Nat and Tamina are now thrown into the Money in the Bank. Oh, so there's not a tag team... To, I mean, okay. whatever. Not to be rude, so you're going to have... And I'll say the same thing. It goes the same thing for the guys. You're going to have a 300 and some pound participant in the fucking money in the bank. Yeah. It's not like they're going to go running and run up the fucking ladder and grab the thing. It's not like she's going to take a Frankensteiner off of the ladder or anything. Not her. Not oh. She can't move like that. It, it, no. No. I, I don't know. I'm I, I imagining that. Maybe I have to do that to somebody in the fantasy broadcast. <laughs> nice. No, I've been I've been put on a leash after my Great American Bash injuries. You have been. You <laughs> have been. This was the, the Great American Bash fantasy podcast was amazing. Um, I I knew where John was going. All right. So Mella defends. Uh, Mella gets a title shot against Bianca. And I thought there was going to be more to the story there. Like, it was just like, all right, 
well, we have to move stuff around. Bianca's defending her title, and that's it. She's not going to be on Money in the Bank now either, which I think is stupid. Because there's no, there's no guess now for if somebody cashes in on what title they're going to cash in. Because Bianca, is she just going to be sitting at ringside? And we'll be hitting. We'll no, be... we'll be hitting that here real quick. So, I, I think it was stupid to have that match taken off the card. You know what I did like? I love fucking Baron Corbin being broke I and, still and asking for $100,000. And the GoFundMe is up. Is. And people are fucking donating to it. Dave Meltzer did. Dave Meltzer donated. The thing is, when you're on, when you're on GoFundMe... Chad, you could put any name in. Like, somebody actually gave $100 and it says Roman Reigns. Do you think Roman Reigns actually gave... Because the money's going right back to the WWE. It's not, do you really think Corbin's going to get... If it gets to $100,000, Vince is going to cut him a check saying, here's your GoFundMe account money. I have to take taxes out on that. And Oh, wait, this is a third-party thing, so you can't have that either. <laughs> he plays this homeless guy like... Perfect, like somebody living down, I, I know I said this last week, living underneath the Clarion River Bridge. Just, here you go. You have to eat the, the fish. I don't, from the, from the I don't like the guy. I've never liked his characters. He's a bastard in the ring, which is fine. He's not supposed to be like, but he's playing this well, and I'm trying not to fucking laugh. I. This is great comedy for them. This is something that the fans are behind. We've seen Corbin as the king running for a while, as werewolf Corbin, or whatever, you know, corporate Corbin. He's been on this high for so long. Nobody, air quotes, likes him. So to see this guy just getting pummeled, remember the movie Falling Down? <laughs> this is... Corbin going through falling down his midlife crisis of just being shit on, and everybody loves it right now. What was the other movie where the guy was in this ho hum fucking job and he decided he was gonna shoot up his office? Office space? No. And he went to do it, and somebody else just happened to do it first? Do it first in front of him and he ended up shooting a girl that he liked and oh my god I can't remember. but anyway this this dude was he, he was dead end job I mean when you say pencil pusher that's basically all he did and then he shoots this hot chick that he had things over and nobody knows that he did this shit they all think the other guy did the stuff and that he was a hero because the bullet that he shot through the fucking girl Hit killed the, the other guy. So they promote him to, like, fucking vice president or something. And the dude, not to be rude, but the dude probably shouldn't have been doing much more than taking orders at Burger King. <laughs> not that we're sponsored by Burger King. And it, it Maybe was McDonald's. A, it was them. kind of like a funny but sad fucking movie. When you find that out, make sure you send it to me. All right, uh, and then we had a fatal four-way match. Um, Seth wins; he pins Big E. That, I, I don't like when they do these fatal four-way matches prior to Money in the Bank because essentially you're giving some of it away. Yeah, essentially, like to me now, that's saying that Seth isn't going to win the Money in the Bank, and if anybody, I, I, I see maybe Big E getting a little bit of a push because he lost the match. We're wrestling fans. We know how this shit works. You're on a down before you get to the high. And usually the high comes really effing quick when you're on that down. Do we have... We're getting there. Biggie win it. And then go to challenge for... I, I forgot who even... Who has the other title? Reigns and Lashley. Reigns and Lashley. <sighs> All right, last thing of wrestling, and then we're going to take a little bit of a break. And Well, two things, actually, because last night we had two events. Um, both we're just going to cover real quick. We're going to dive into IWC. 
or we're not going to really deep dive into Slammiversary. Um, IWC Fight Night, guys, it's available on the IWC Network for only nine ninety nine a month, or you can go back and watch it on Fight, um, their app, or their however the hell you watch Fight. Uh, I think it was 15 bucks for the show last night. Um, great matches. Uh, I, maybe Chad and I were talking, maybe we should have drove down, uh, whatever. Um, nonetheless, uh, a, a lot of twists and turns. Maybe we can do a deep dive into this later on. Um, possibly, I have I have a interview set up this week, but he's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it by Tuesday night, which means um, we might need something for Wednesday. So I'll keep you on the just of that. I know you watched enough or covered enough that we can maybe do the spotlight of fight night if the interview doesn't come through. But let me just say... There's going to be some people leaving IWC for bigger promotions because of what happened last night. And if you're just listening to this and... Jock Sampson's leaving? Essentially, yes, he is. Fuck yeah! Um, Oh, sorry. Essentially, if you're going to listen to this right now, spoiler alert, uh, we're going to tell you about some stuff. So fast forward or, you know, do whatever you need to do. Um, Bill Collier and Matt Justice fucking ripped the roof off, roof off of... Roof. roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. Ripped the roof off of Court Time Sports. Um, I've never seen a Super Indie match like this before. It was balls of the walls, old ECW type style match. Matt Justice got thrown off the fucking balcony. That's the clip that you guys see online. Through a table. Okay, that was in itself. Matt Justice is absolutely insane anyway. He's, you know, essentially the new new Jack or new without being a jackass like that before I get crushed there. But he does crazy ass shit. Then you have six foot seven, three hundred and fifty pound fucking Bill Collier flying off of that same balcony onto everybody. Hello? Bill Collier, we've been waving your flag for years, but if this isn't a spotlight saying this is what this guy can do and a different style than I've ever seen Bill wrestle in my life, holy shit, Chad. Yeah, he's... uh, You killed him in your fantasy league, by the way. I did not kill him, people. He's just minorly hurt with a broken 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 neck. neck. Um. He's he's come around in just the time that I've seen him in IWC. It's another one. More action, more matches, get more used to things. Your everything kind of tightens up, gets a little bit more crisp, and it just shows. Now let's throw. Okay, I'm in a fucking fight. Let's just throw that in there. Yeah, and he fucking fought. <laughs> uh, like I said. Maybe next week, if not Wednesday, we'll go. We'll do a deep dive into this because there's there's a lot, a lot of good stuff, um, some twists and turns that I didn't see, and I'm excited about it. Slammiversary last night again. We don't have to dive into deep dive matches. You guys can go back and watch that. Um, start from the top down. I just say with with Slammiversary, just mention the, the yeah who, points. Um, Chelsea Green. Matt Cardona. hot fucking mess. Yeah. Uh, Matt Cardona, surprise partner. Um, she gets to win. How about Deanna Peraza's mystery opponent? That really caught me off guard. Yeah. Um, you talk about the mega show happening, Chad. Here comes the mega show. ROH, because Chelsea, essentially a free agent. She can go anywhere. But... We're going to put the tag on her as ROH right now. Okay? ROH. Impact. Thunder Rosa comes in. Challenges Deanna Peraza. There's your NWA. Okay? And then at the end of the show, you have Omega. Not Omega. Because he keeps the title. But I a mega star... From where, Chad? New Japan. And who was it, Chad? 
Switchblade Jay White. Holy piss. When I saw that online, I shit a brick. There is certain wrestlers with New Japan. And I know Jay White's, you know, started and was in the U.S. a lot. But he, he moved over there a couple years ago. Um, just comes back and makes appearances. But there are certain wrestlers with New Japan that when they come to the States, it's a big fucking thing. When they, I'm sorry, let me reverse. When they come other than a New Japan right card in the States, which doesn't happen often, um, will be happening this year, uh, that it, it hits and it's big fucking news. Jay White is number two on that list. Yeah. When I heard he come down, the first fucking thing I did is went to YouTube and watched the clip. I was like, holy shit. I was thankful. My God, did he didn't team with those fucking idiots. idiots. Um, just if you look at this thing, Jay was attacked by Finn Juice and kicked the fucking shit out of them. The big man is coming from New Japan. Okada is going to come. Yep. And when that happens... Look out. The fuck... It, he is... The biggest name in Japan and has been... For a while. For a few years. You want to equate it to something? We're talking Anoki coming. Yeah. We're talking Baba coming over. We're talking Bruiser Brody coming in from, I want to say, unfortunately, uh, he Bruiser had a great reputation in Puerto Rico. Right, I knew that's where you were going. Um, that's, that's where they're going. Yeah. And, you know, I joke around, pat myself on the back. Oh, the mega card, and these guys got to work together. This is what fucking excites me. Guys, you got to check out New Japan and see what these guys can do. What you've seen Jay White do in the U.S. is nothing compared to what he does over there. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of spoilers. We have new tag team champions as... I just forgot. Oh, the Gallows and Anderson won the tag team championship back. Um, and the then, ladies. Well, that's I remember this one because my girls, Tasha Steeles... And Kier Hogan, Kier Hogan uh, flavor, fire and flavor, whatever the hell. I just love Tasha Steeles. Um, lost their championships to John's girl, Havoc, Havoc, and Rosemary. So, yeah, a lot of st a lot of good stuff is happening with Impact. I, I think they're as much as we said earlier in the show that they're kind of down at the bottom feeder. They're the ones that are going to throw shit against the wall to see if it happens and not they, care. Yeah, they they have nothing to lose. To lose. Um, nothing against NWA when I say this, but as a conservative organization that uh, Billy is running it as and trying, you know, history-wise, they're not going to do the shit that Impact's doing. Right. And it, again, Impact at least has a buzz consistently because they're doing stuff like this. NWA's buzz left. It, it left. It, you know, if they say, hey, a crock of cup's coming next week, yeah, we're going. We're going. But it's going to be like, oh, man, who's going to be there? It, it's not going to be as hyped as it was two years ago when we were going to go there. Yeah. I will always say one of the big regrets and with wrestling and stuff is that this pandemic hit when it did because the NWA was on fire. A fucking hair's width away from just exploding going into that next Crockett Cup squirrel and all this rematch. Um, we would have gotten our money back. Right. <laughs> all right. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll go over some 
more news from Wrestling World. We'll also touch on our Money in the Bank predictions. We got a birthday that we missed and unfortunately a passing we have to talk about. And then a Two new passings. segment that's going to be dropped next week as Chad has brought something to the table and I really like it. Hey, this is Jumpin' Jim Brunzel and my favorite podcast is Can Crushers. It should be yours too. And welcome back, Hand Crusher Nation. It is I, the Glorious Guru, in studio with Mark the Mark, bringing back our final segment of this broadcast. Uh, predictions, uh, birthdays, um, unfortunately a passing to talk about, kind of everything. Um, Start with whatever you want, because I'll pull up the Money in the Bank card. Yeah, yeah. let's uh, let's get the bad, I say the bad things out of the way. Um anniversary yesterday of when Bruiser Brody was killed in uh, Puerto Rico. Can't believe it's been 20-some years. I know. I was like, holy shit, it's really been that long. Um, man, a talent that lost that we lost way too soon. Uh, probably one of the last guys that I fucking feared seeing him come down to the ring because he was a crazy son of a bitch. He was a crazy son of a bitch. Um, and the big news that hit wrestling earlier this week was the passing last Sunday. Yeah. After our show, we found out uh, Paul, Mr. Wonderful Orndorff, passed away at 71. Yeah, we, we touched on it on Friday show a little bit. Um, we gave John a little bit of time to, to say his things, but... We, we just did a Love Him While We Got Him um, maybe a couple weeks ago with Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff because of everything. We saw the, the decline, uh, what, maybe six weeks ago, Chad? And then yeah, there was uh, his son yeah. put a video. And Paul's mind was there. He could remember things, remember who he was. I mean, he when I say remember things, he could remember a lot about wrestling. It was just hard to watch because um, he looked like a, a skeleton with skin stretched over it. And yeah. you remember him from back in the heyday. He, he was jacked, but he wasn't ridiculously jacked like some of the guys got on on uh, steroids gyms. yeah um and then you know what what i consider outside of magnum ta and tully blanchard's i quit match uh to be the greatest cage match was hogan and orndorff the um, tie hogan or orndorff made hogan his first run by being his his fucking opponent. Yeah. Um, and then, or, you know, uh, WrestleMania one and two Orndorff was involved in, uh, he was one of these guys that I think could have been a two or three month champion. Yeah. That would have been transition perfect for one. Hogan. Yeah. Uh, to drop it to and come back and get it. Um, and then he had a disagreement with Vince, a falling out with Vince and, after WrestleMania 2, you didn't see him. Not long after that, he was gone for a while. Yeah. Um, funniest thing I can I can remember about two things, and then I'll I'll you know funniest thing I can remember about him is when they were doing the uh, video. This this all the wrestlers were up there singing and stuff. You have Paul Orndorff flexing and kissing his biceps and that's all he did oh, the from whole the, time during from the wrestling album. Yeah. Yeah. He's going on yeah. the, on a funny thing. And you can see that he's trying not to fucking laugh, but it looks good. Uh, my first remembrance of him was he was national champion back in Georgia championship wrestling. And he was getting ready to go against flair. And the storyline that they brought in was he was, uh, relinquishing the title because he didn't feel he could train properly for his world title match. That was the coolest way to take a fucking title off of somebody. Yeah. I, I agree. And it was believable back then. Right. Um, definitely a loss. Uh, 
good family man, uh, a tough son of a bitch. Uh, put him in there. You got to be in a, you know, probably the top five toughest guys of all time. Uh, beat the shit out of Vader. My favorite pile driver. <laughs> he had my favorite pile driver out there. It wasn't, you know, he just sat down. It, it was and just, the guy was fucking straight. Yeah. Every time. It didn't matter if it was somebody like a Bam Bam or somebody like a Sam Houston. And, and I don't know if he gave either one of them one, but I'm just saying the body differences. He could hold up a big guy or he could clearly make the little guy look. Well, he did it to, he did it to Hogan. Right. Many times. And Hogan, even back then, wasn't one to sell for people or work with people that he didn't want to. But he trusted Orndorff to fucking give him pile drivers. Yeah. So. Um, definitely a, a loss. Uh, you know, keep his uh, his family, his son, uh, his other children, and that in your thoughts and prayers. Uh yeah, we'll, we'll this raise goes, our glasses to Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff right now. Yeah. Definitely a loss in the in the wrestling. Uh, I met him MCW when we first found MCW had like their Night of Superstars legend show or whatever. Met him down there. He's a talker too. He he likes to talk, so he was. So sorry. Um all right. What anything uh, Bert, one uh one other thing. Uh a birthday this week that it come across a couple of the things I think it came across. We did Al Snows ones. already. Not Al Snows. Mil Mascaris. Oh wow. Birthday. Um not to be rude, I didn't even know dude was still living. I didn't either. Till um, right now. But holy shit, if you if you watch WWE in the seventies and early eighties, he was a fixture there. Never won Never Anything. won the title. Yeah. I think he had the tag team titles. Probably one of the 15 guys that Tony Gurria had a tag team title run with. Um, which, God willing, we'll meet Tony Gurria this coming weekend. That There you go. That's um, where I was going. But Mascaris was... A, he was the one that embodied the... I don't want to say the Lucha Libre, but the Mexican tradition of wrestling of... You fucking wear that mask. <laughs> this guy didn't take this mask off if there was any cameras around. And his wife went on record with an interview saying half the times they either had sex with the mask on or he t- kept the mask on when he was in the shower. That's unbelievable. Uh, so Chad brought up Tony Gurria, which is a great segment segue here. Uh, next weekend... Um, essentially, the English professor will be back on the show because he's coming to the house. And then Saturday, we're going to Hamburg, Pennsylvania for the Legends of Hamburg convention and like autograph session. Going to be there. Uh, I'll run through some. Tito Santana, Jimmy Hart, Brooklyn Brawler, Tony Gurria. Uh, New Jack was to be there. He was slated. Cowboy uh, Bob Orton. Uh, Barry Horowitz, Snitsky. Uh, Papa Shango, Jillian Hall, uh, Sandman, ECW, Johnny Rods, Gary Michael Capetta. We talked to him over a year ago now. Uh, I really want to get something of him. Um, some local people. If you guys remember that uh, Dave Dahl was a spotlight guy. He was trying to get on the wrestling Retromania game. He essentially did get on it. He's going to be there, so we'll get to meet him. Excited. Dominic DiNucci. Dominic DiNucci is going to be there. Doink the Clown, meaning Ray Apollo. Doink the Clown. Um, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of guys on there. And here's something. Mark has the thing up. Um, the Samoan clan yeah, uh, is going to be there. Jacob Fatu uh, is going to be there along with... Uh, I don't want to... The, gr- the great... Afala, uh, Afa Jr., uh, Lance is going to be there. Um, you'll be able to get a picture and autograph yeah. with all of them for like now, 20 bucks. Yeah, and we we had to clarify, or I had more clarify this. There's like five of them in this picture. Well, Max is you back, can by get the way. Pic- He's excited about this segment. Um, 35 bucks for an autograph of all these guys. 
in a picture with all of them. Uh, Dominic DiNucci, long, long, long time um, local wrestling celebrity. 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, the other guys, nobody's more expensive than $30 for an autograph in a picture. If you want, and it averages out, if you want the Nasty Boys and Jimmy Hart, and this is the most expensive thing, uh, Nasty Boys and Jimmy Hart, all of them on one photo and autographs by all of them is 90 bucks. So again, 30 bucks a pop, but that's a nice, that's a nice pop too. You know, yeah. I have a Jimmy Hart, but I'm thinking, well, I don't have the Nasty Boys, so why not maybe, maybe do something with the Jimmy Hart that I do have in time and get them up there this way. I'm also thinking, Chad, the studio's pretty effing packed right now, so if I would get the Nasty Boys and Jimmy Hart up there, I don't have to have three separate pictures, I would just have one. You can get them autographed. Yeah. I'm taking uh, two things I've showed. Well, one thing I'm taking to this one that I've showed Mark. I have a newspaper or magazine printing plate that has uh, Money Inc. Ted DiBiase no, and you're not, IRS. You're not taking that to this one. Oh, for Jimmy. And it has Jimmy Hart in the middle. I'm going to take it. I, that's what I want Jimmy Hart to sign. And then when we go to WrestleCade, then I'll get the other two to sign it. Right. Um. If anybody wants anything, get a hold of us. Cancrusher69 at gmail.com. Except Pat. Fuck Pat. Right. You get your own shit. The English professor is joining us. The English the... professor is joining us, yes. So, uh, he's coming into town Friday night. Crash here. Uh, we have to put logistics together. It's about a three and a half hour trip. So, I'd like to leave to be there no later than nine o'clock. So that means we're going to have to get his ass out of bed. Don't they start the shit at 10? Yeah. I said no later. That's so we'd have, oh, we'd have to leave about fucking 5 o'clock in the morning. Exactly. Have you ever seen the English professor at 5 o'clock in the morning? Unfortunately, I saw him yesterday at 10 o'clock in the morning. That was and all I could think of was George Costanza. He looked like a fucking fur-bearing mammal. Wow. Like a silverback gorilla. So he'll <laughs> he'll probably sit in the back and nap on the way down because the poor guy, if he doesn't get twenty four hours of sleep in a day, he's rough shape. It showed. It showed. It showed. Uh, gone but never forgotten, English professor. We'll still rip on you because you're yeah. really never gone, and you really can't do shit about it. So <laughs> yeah, you're fucked. <laughs> uh, anything else that we want to talk about before we dive into the money in the bank predictions for tonight? Nope. Nope, I'm good, too. I, I thought so. Um, I know this match is going to be the opening match on the pre-show. It's the Mysterios against the Usos for the SmackDown Championships. Um, I'm really... We're not going to make a bet on this one. Oh, wait. Slide back. We do have something that we we're going to talk about. Chad's bringing up a new segment. Remember you said... Oh, point, point counterpoint. Um... Guys, send in, in some suggestions on this. I've got a couple. But what we're going to do is we're going to put, um, let's say, different things in wrestling history. Uh, Montreal screw job. Who was to blame? Um, you know, Ric Flair leaving with the world title two weeks before fucking Great American Bash. He was supposed to lose it to Barry Windham. The Jeff Jarrett, Hulk Hogan finger poke yeah those kind of things and what the point counterpoint is we're gonna pull one out randomly yeah what a week and mark and i will flip a coin and then whoever wins the coin toss they get to argue their point and force the other person to argue the, the other point the other point an example would be the montreal screw job was it brett's fault there's was it McMahon's fault? Now, if I win it and I say, I'm going to argue Bret Hart's, Mark can't agree with me. He has to argue. It was Vince's. It was Vince's and only Vince's. So you're going to kind of... We're not starting with that one, though. No. That that one's going to be safe for down the road. But send us some we'll start, suggestions, we'll start. anything. Um, yeah. It can be anything, but it has to be something... 
where you could point counterpoint. Yeah. And we uh, and there don't are, send them Saturday night at nine o'clock. Yeah, and there <laughs> are some that I don't want to say are taboo, but Alberto Del Rio and Paige comes to mind with the shit that's going on. Yeah, boy, that, that, that would be a tough one. So yeah, um, predictions. Yeah, predictions for Money in the Bank again. As I said on the pre-show, it's going to be the Mysterios against the Usos. We're not betting. This week, just because I don't want to write anything down, maybe we can whatever. But we'll we'll bet something. The next pay per view, uh, Chad. This has the Usos written all over it. Unfortunately, I'll agree. I'll just say I. David Morris here. Hey, David Morris. I don't think who the hell is David Morris. What do you want, Son of a bitch? Um, Chad's going hunting apparently after this. I uh, I don't think. I don't think having Jimmy Uso in this match with his um, issues issues is appropriate. I I think I'm not saying suspend him, fire him, but they need to get him help versus having him out in front of a fucking crowd. Um, I do agree with Mark. I think that they're going to win this match. Yeah. Men's Money in the Bank. You have Ricochet, Morrison, Riddle, McIntyre, Big E, Kevin Owens, Nakamura. And Seth Rollins, um, go ahead, Chad, because I have a caveat on this. This is the only money in the bank for the men's, right? No. Yeah. Because Drew McIntyre. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I Money would have to go with Drew McIntyre winning. Um, I think that's kind of where they're pushing, unfortunately, again. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Seth Rollins. I'm going to say Riddle is injured going into this. Because I, I said this a couple weeks ago, and I'm going to stand with it. Riddle's going is going to be injured somehow backstage, or his ankle still tweaked or whatever. And Randy Orton steps in for him, and then Randy gets the money in the bank, giving him one more. Not saying that he's leaving anytime soon, but... I think Randy gets one more run as champion at some point. I'm not saying he cashes in against the winner tonight, but it's just something maybe... Because both of them were used pretty quick last year. So I think maybe Randy holds on to this a little bit, um, and I think Randy wins it. All right, staying with the money in the bank for the women, and this is where we start twisting things up. You have Asuka, Naomi, Bliss... Nikki Ash, Liv Morgan, Vega, Nat and Tamina. If, and that's a big fucking if, there's not a surprise entrant, I'm going with Alexa Bliss. If Becky Lynch comes in, I'm going with Becky Lynch. I agree wholeheartedly because you can't, and we talked about this off air a little bit over the last week, Becky Lynch comes in and you don't give it to her. You've just wasted her return. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, and then if she does win, when she wins this, if she's thrown into this, uh, it already sp- ruins a match down the line for me as well. Even if the match happens prior or after or whatever, and I'm going to go right into it, you have the Ripley Flair match. Um, No disrespect, I don't think Ripley's done anything. She hasn't really popped with this championship. I I could be in the minority for this. The fans not being there, she's one of the big ones that's hurt the fans not being there. Flair wins that match. Becky cashes in. Becky is now your champ tomorrow on Raw. That yeah. fast. Um, I don't think there's any... There can't be any any other way to bring Becky back than to do this. Just right off the bat, she left as the hottest woman in... Debatable in wrestling. Yeah. Um, definitely the WWE. You bring her right the fuck back. And if anybody's not seen the shape that she is in, 
Damn. Good lord. Who did you say if Becky doesn't come back? Alexa Bliss. Oh. Uh-uh. Yeah. It, 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 it's a, it's torn between Bliss and Liv. It really is. I think it, they want to give Liv something. No disrespect that nobody else in this match deserves it. Uh, Bobby against Kofi for the WWE Championship. Um, this is where another surprise is going to happen. Not that anybody wants it. Again, the setting up for a SummerSlam match. <coughs> Kofi's not winning. Or if he does win... Um, <laughs> he's not going to He's going to... He, no, he's not no, going to No, stop. He, he's going to lose it again in eight seconds at SummerSlam. No, stop. He's not winning. He's not winning. No. Goldberg's coming back in that match. Yes. Just, Goldberg and Bobby Lashley. SummerSlam main event. In 2021. Exciting. Not. Pumped. Not. Even with a dick pump, could I get pumped up for that match? Roman Reigns against, <laughs> Roman Reigns against Edge. This match doesn't end. It ends, but I'm just saying, like, I don't think we have a, a winner. Essentially. Because I don't think you can have Edge take a clean fall. I even think a dirty fall might hurt Edge a little bit. Roman's not losing it tonight, I don't think, either. I think Roman loses it. Edge doesn't hold it for long. I think Roman loses it. I think Edge wins it. So then Roman's the bitch of the family since the Usos have the tag titles now? No, it's one more way to keep the story going. And then, I don't know why they have these. Apparently, this match just was added. I mean, we knew about it since Monday, but normally they have them ranked. Like, oh, this is going to be your main event. Uh, AJ and Olmos against the Viking fucking Raiders, Warriors, Experience. But I, Minnesota? Minnesota Vikings. Chad, I don't want anybody to win this match. I want AJ to drop the tag titles. I hate AJ and Olmos together. I, I don't think it's doing anything for either one, essentially. I'm just... Olmos is, needs to go back to um, Raw Underground. And that's been canceled. Uh, In AJ Styles, if, if we're gonna pit, I, think, I think the Minnesota Vikings are going to win this. <laughs> they'll win this before they'll win a fucking Super Bowl, I'll tell you that much. And you're not a fan of the Vikings. No. All right. Well, that's it. That's We're going to end on that note. That's pretty shitty. Uh, we got to think of something good to end on. Okay. Here, here, people. Knowing that we're going to Hamburg next week, knowing that John's going to be sleeping in the back, what kind of dirty tricks can we pull on John while he's sleeping? So, send us some. Give us some ideas. And you can send us a great segue. Um, All our social medias are at CanCrusher69. That's Instagram, Twitter, and the Facebook. Again, email is CanCrusher69 at gmail.com. Guys, I haven't mentioned this in forever, but you can listen to us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Buzzsprout, our Anchor. I always want to say Archer. I mean, you can't listen to us on Lance Archer. He's he doesn't I play. Mean, he's anything. big enough, right? Um, and a ton of other type of um, podcasting sites. We're out there. We po- we post it on Facebook too. You guys know that. Uh, we haven't thanked you guys enough recently, so I want to thank everybody in the Can Crusher Nation for supporting us over all the years. I mean, I'm not even going to say our numbers continue to grow because they are. I I, I don't understand. How, how, and I mean this wholeheartedly, like, I don't understand how myself, you, anybody that's ever been associated with Can Crushers, we legit are a group of friends that just sit here, drink beer normally, uh, or coffee, or eat, or whatever, and talk wrestling, and you guys love us so much, so thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to our sponsor, Collar and Elbow, um, also give a big look to Powerbomb Wrestling Apparel. Just I'm going to tease that as well. 
Um, I have the time of my life. I could be in a shitty mood, but when I get ready to podcast with everything between Spotlights, the Fantasy Show, and this, man, you guys sending the love week in and week out by just showing me that you continue to listen to us is awesome. Yeah, even even guys like Pat Lupino <laughs> liking posts and commenting every so often. I mean, that's kind of scraping the broad, bottom of the barrel, and most people aren't there, but we love you all. All of you. Except Jock Sampson, you fat bastard. Hey, hey, you lost the reset button, jackass. And the regulators are no more. Chat, let's see if you can step it up, because now that there's only two of us, will you remember your whole part? Remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Look at this. Yeah!